the ride or die. Uh, Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the social emotional skills that it takes to work with young children, especially when you're coaching a town uh, soccer or even club. So if you're like a volunteer or if you're a new coach or someone that's just trying to get into it, maybe because your kid co your kid plays and you feel like coaching them and you're like, hey, I'll take on this team, but didn't realize that sometimes when you take on these groups of people that you have or groups of kids, you have to remember your kid is not your kid. He's your player. But before we get into that, don't forget I am doing a wonderful giveaway. Now this is a game used signed ball by the LA Galaxy team. And it's got 18 signatures on it. Best part about it is it's even got scuff marks and a little bit of turf, dirt and stuff like that on it to say, hey, it really was on the turf. The best part about this though is it has the Beckett's letter of authenticity with if you haven't noticed, Steve Grad, if you watch uh, Pawn Stars, they call him in and he comes and does the analysis of the Pawn Stars uh, autographs as well as memorabilia. And if I believe right, he's also a huge Star Wars person. So um, you can check this out by going to my TikTok right here and following what we ask you to do in order to enter and to win. It's a fantastic little giveaway that encourages you to do something authentic with soccer. So let's get into what does it mean to be a coach, a new coach, or a volunteer coach with players of different emotional levels and engagements. When we're trying to work with kids, it's very difficult, right? Because they all have different personalities, but the one thing that they all hold true, they don't hide it well. A child that has a lot of energy, let's start with kids that have ADD or they are very energetic and they are just very hard to focus. And you're having a difficult time telling them what to do. And a lot of times coaches come into the idea that I need to tell you what to do, you need to listen, and you need to act upon what I've told you to do. Kids, you have to remember, they've been in school all day with that basically being crammed down their throat. So one thing that they really don't want to do is come to soccer and have that sent back at them. So they're going to be a bit standoffish because they don't see you as a teacher, they see you as a coach and sometimes that percep perception is a little bit different. What I tell my players um, that are energetic is, hey, you seem to be having a difficult time. I don't say that of course, but I'm thinking and I'm like, hey, look, you know, can you do something for me? I'm going to give you the job of captain today and what I want you to do is I want you to help motivate your players or your teammates to get the task done. And this is what we're going to do. Just because a player has a lot of energy doesn't mean they're not listening or they don't comprehend what we need to get done. And what they'll do is they'll retain all of it and then they'll do their own thing because they're bored waiting for you trying to explain it to everyone else. So give them the task of helping you. That way, they're not really focused so much on disruption and doing their own thing. Now they're using their energy to help you obtain the goal in which you're trying to accomplish. So maybe you're trying to get scrimmage started and you decided, well, this team go over there, this team go over there. You're trying to get one team that's kind of t quiet and not really working together. You sent the energetic kid off to the other team. He's all crazy running around doing all these things, but you told him, Organize your team for me. I need you to put them all in positions and get them ready for the scrimmage. And what happens? They'll do it. They will use that energy and now instead of just running around being disruptive, now they're allocating that energy towards getting the game ready. And now you have two people helping you instead of just you and the assistant or just you. So use that energy towards what you would like them to do or what you would like someone to help you do because they will be more than happy to help coach. So that's one way you can work with a kid that's got like a bunch of energy and it's like exploding with, you know, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And they're just like, oh, I've got to do this and I'm running around and disruption's bad, but reallocating that towards what you're trying to accomplish will be very helpful and beneficial and less stressful towards what you're trying to do. Now, let's flip it to the other side of the spectrum where we have a quiet player. They, they're not very engaging on the field. They're very, they don't really tell you what they're doing or what they're thinking or what they don't understand. They just kind of stay off to the side. These players can be very difficult to work with because they won't really tell you stuff. You can tell and you can see visually that they're having a hard time, but whenever it comes to actually engaging and executing certain skill moves or certain activities, 
they don't really engage so well. So one of the things that I like to do is leave them to their own devices, talk to them, be nice to them, make them feel welcome, and tell them, do your best, and then tell me, what do you like, what did you enjoy about that? What was the one thing that you really liked seeing or doing? You use that, you hook into it, and you say, okay, well, we're gonna try and work on this today. And we'll take it step by step. Because you go from the one player who can do like 50 different things at one time to the one player that does maybe one or two. And that's it. That's fine. You have to understand as a coach, it's not about going A, to B, C, D, E, F, G all the way through the alphabet. It's about going A to B sometimes and B to C and then starting to work slowly by building building blocks with players because they don't all learn at the same speed. And that can be very difficult for some new coaches that aren't really understanding that you're a teacher. You have to teach. And that means doing for the fast kids who are like, oh, get it, boom, 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 boom. With the slow kids, it's step one, step two, step three, step four. But you'll see once they understand it and you hook them into it, then it'll start to speed up later. Um, because it, it, not all kids are going to be a Messi or a Ronaldo. They're just not. And it's not fair to give players those titles because sometimes they feel like that's too much of a responsibility. And we want them to have responsibilities and to feel engaged and loved and cared for and you know they have all these fun stuff that they can do, but we want them to feel safe and we want them to feel comfortable. And if they don't feel safe and comfortable, they're not gonna really engage as much or they're gonna act out. So you gotta find personal relationships with the difficult kids because then you have to understand how can I tailor this to work in my favor. And of course you'll have some kids that are just wonderful. They do everything you say, they're the typical player and you can go on about your day. But when you count coach, sometimes club, but mostly with town, you'll have some of these players that have a difficulty time really coping with the rules and stuff and it takes a little bit of extra effort to get them under your control. <laughs> so just remember, some of them will go super, super fast. Some of them are gonna go very, very slow. So don't get upset because one kid's fast and one kid's slow. Eventually they'll catch up. You just can't get frustrated because if you get frustrated, they'll shut down. One of the worst things that players can do is feed off of the coach's negativity. And once that happens, it's very hard to bring them back in because they will be afraid of you or they'll not respect you. Which, if you have either one of those, controlling a kid will not be possible because you are not mom and dad. You do have a limitation in which you can control what they do. So you have to make sure that you're not working off of fear, because fear is not good, and you're not working off of you know, anxiety and you know, too many things. So this needs to be a sport of passion, a sport of love, a sport of enjoyment, not I show up, coach gonna yell at me. Because they'll tell their parents, they'll tell their friends, they'll tell all the people that they talk to, this coach is scary. And you know, sometimes, you know, after you've repeatedly told this one player, stop doing this, if they become to the point where they're being dangerous, such as slide tackling or they're hurting other players, that's where you start to implement strict rules or you start to be a little more stern with them because you have to have some level of understanding that we're not going to do that. And if you do that, you can leave and I will send you off my field. That's okay to say, that will get through their head. And one of the things that I found as a director of coaching is that I'll work with some teams with, you know, Johnny on the team and mommy's the coach. And I'll walk up to Johnny and be like, I don't care if that's your mom or not. When you're on this field, you're a soccer player. You're not Johnny whose parents the coach. Because that's not the way it works here. Because if some kids will have in their mind, well, my mom's the coach, I can do whatever I want. No, that's not good. The coach has to make sure that they tell their kid, if I'm going to coach your team, I cannot give you special treatment and I cannot treat you with different level of understanding that I do the other players. If you act up, I have to punish you like I would have to punish one of the other players. Because you have to have some level of understanding that, you know, when we go home, mom, Johnny. When we're on the field, coach, player, and it has to stay that way. It just has to, because if you have special attention drawn towards one player, then you're neglecting all the other players, and that really is not fair to them, because you're in charge of leading the team and teaching and educating all of them, not just your 
son or daughter. So you gotta make sure that while you're on that field that you understand that, you know, these are players, you're the coach. When you're at home, then you can do whatever you want. That's not in anybody's control or anyone's, you know, business. You do what you want when you're at home, but when you're on the field, coach, player, it doesn't matter if it's mom and daughter or son, doesn't matter. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping some level of understanding, that we're not losing ourselves in, you know, frustration. So kids, they're gonna be frustrated. So anyways, thanks so much. Um, I'll try to start uploading more often. I know I've been a bit of MIA lately, but it's been busy. So I will be posting more videos. I think um, some more coaching tips, but I'll try and start posting some more training videos as well. So thank you guys so much and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content just like this.